Hello everybody, may you be well together with your family. And today in this session, sometimes people ask me, and they are curious when, I, when they ask me, where are you from, Bante? I say, from Mexico. Why? Is there Buddhism in Mexico? I say, well, it's just developing. Now it's, it's changing. Young people is very interested and it's growing. And then when the young people come, then they start inviting their parents or their uncles and then they start growing. So uh, since some people have curiosity what kind of uh, Dhamma activities we are having in Mexico, I will show what is happening over there. I've been, I was there for five years before and also started constructing a Mexican institute for, to learn Buddhism. So I will show some images. So here, for example, you can see in Mexico, I come from the west, west side. I, I don't see the, yeah. So where you can see the green dots is where I come from. The name of the city is Guadalajara. It's the second city in Mexico. Mexico City is more, a little bit more south and in the center of the country. So uh, before I was ordained this time, my job before was a musician and a composer. So I knew I wanted to become a monk. So I decided together with my ex-wife to work intensively for 10 years before ordaining uh, for this time, because I ordained previously as a temporary in Burma. So we worked a lot and saved. And then finally, when I became a monk, I decided to use all those savings on my, on my part uh, for building this uh, Mexican Institute. So the, this is part of, of the dam activities and where the base is, is going to be in the future. So it's going to be school is not like a retreat center because it actually has only a few rooms it's not so big but it is on the forest fortunately so it's very conducive people can go to their jobs finish in the evening come to the center it's not far like 40 minutes and then they come learn the dhamma and then return you will see some of the groups many people started eventually started started to come so this is the the institute so as I said, it's in a forest, 100 hectares, but uh, that is a protected land from the government. And we are on the side. Fortunately, there is no boundary. So when you look out from the door, it seems like you have a very big uh, uh, garden in front. This is the entrance with some waterfalls from playing from one place to the other. The, the Noble Eightfold Path the, uh, is inscripted in many places. You will see in the door. So the Dhamma wheel. So when children come, sometimes we show them, oh, this is Sila, this is Samadhi, this is Panya. So I wanted, since the design of the, of the place, that if there was no monk, the place itself, the architecture, could continue teaching the Dhamma. So here is the door, as you, as you can see, the Dhamma wheel. So uh, it is a little hill. So we enter from one side and we made a tunnel. So it is kind of coming from the darkness to the light of the Dhamma. That was the idea. And also this tunnel is a uh, design. I like to do walking meditation, but sometimes with the eyes closed. So what we did in the walls, we designed them in a way that you can do walking meditation and the, the wall is taking care of you, guiding you. You go around and then when you reach the edge, you, you can feel it on the hand and you turn and then you go back to the other side. So actually every single place is designed for practice. And as you come uh, in the middle of the tunnel, there is this reception where people will take out the shoes and then we'll have a Bodhi tree. That actually is a fountain. So when you come in, it will be water spilling like very gently around. And then the Bodhi tree will be in, inside, like if water was holding the Bodhi tree, like, like the nectar of the Dhamma flowing out, something like this. And then from top that is where the light uh, is going to come for the Bodhi tree. And fortunately, uh, in 2015, I went to Bodh Gaya and it was time that the Maha Bodhi tree was uh, releasing the little figs with the, with the seeds. So I was meditating with my teacher there and suddenly I hear took a little, then I open the eyes and I take the seeds and I put it into my pocket. <laughs> and then the seeds, I thank you, thank you very much. The tree was just releasing them. So I got a few seeds, went back to Mexico from the real, directly from the Maha Bodhi tree and three of them came. I planted many, but uh, only three came. So now these trees uh, are bigger than this. So two will go outside and the one that is inside the tunnel, 
uh, since it has not uh, all the soil that it, uh, like full, full, full soil ground, uh, it will become, get small, become smaller like a little, not bonsai, but we will keep it small. So we will, I will show you later how, we, how it becomes. I haven't planted it. I want to come back and then start. The place hasn't started yet. This is where the uh, sun comes uh, from the top, where the Bodhi tree will get its nourishment. There is also ventilation and uh, everything. The conditions are good. As you come out of the tunnel, you see what the, the, this, this is a room on the left. Uh, now it's, it's, uh, that this is when it was not finished. Now it's a little bit better, but the monastery has not yet been finished because uh, I didn't mention from, from, the, I, 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 yeah, I, from the savings that I had, I said, okay, let's give it to the Dhamma anyway. As a monk, I will need them. So I put everything, but now the funds has been finished. So there are still some, those original funds are finished. Uh, there are still some things to do, the flooring. I was able to find and get the wood. Now the only thing we will need is to find the workers and all, all the process to finish the painting, some gardening, and one of the things is woodwork for the doors and the closets and all this. The stair that you see on the side, uh, there, is, there is one, another small tunnel, round door on the left, beyond, beside the, this room, and this is where you enter the Dhamma hall, the, the meditation hall, and this one goes up to the classroom or dining hall, the main room in the, in the third level. So this is the view, we are very fortunate, so as you can see, as I just mentioned, the forest doesn't belong to the, to, the mon to the monastery, but there is no border, so when you look out, it's just like a huge garden. And we have, as you can see on the left, we have some areas for meditation and also to do tea ceremony, either Chinese style or Japanese style we prepare. So when people come, so maybe somebody not yet very used to just being silent, then the tea ceremony can be a nice introduction to quiet and, and be doing something, uh, getting sensitive about the environment, etc., etc. So this is a view in the evening time, very uh, fortunate. This is one of the toilets. So the shower is on the right and the, and the toilet is on the left. So we try to make everything flow and round so the mind doesn't get stuck in any, in any corner or angle. So everything is flowing here, here and there. Quite, quite nice to, to move around. Plants everywhere, like, like uh, little places where the plants will be hanging. And also this is the top, the, uh, the Dhamma hall, the classroom and dining hall. As you can see, this is a view from under. And all those places, there are many benches so pe where people can sit and, and contemplate. So as I said, people will come and learn. And maybe on Saturdays, people might stay the day, may maybe make offering. I, I don't know how am I going to deal. There, are, there is no capilla. There, I don't know where the alms round is going to be yet. So I haven't started. So many challenges going back. But anyway, many people can come. I'm thinking on Saturdays or if they can and during the week offer the lunch and then stay around and contemplate with the plants hanging. So I was involved in the construction for five years intensively, working every single day. It was very, very intensive, like physically, and also the, the, the dealing with the workers. Fortunately, there was uh, my ex-wife was helping to handle the money, so I didn't need to, 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 to touch it in any way. I was just dealing and giving instructions to the workers. So every single curve that you see in the, in the building, uh, the architect will send me the, the drawings and uh, my job, because he is from France, so my, he's a very good friend who donated, fortunately, the design. So my job was to get the, the, the drawings and then draw everything physically on the floor so the workers could follow, could follow the, the, the lines. And beyond that, I did got involved into the construction itself as much as I, I didn't dig or anything to, to protect the Vinaya. But I was working together with them also with the installation of the electricity. And as you can see, installing some of the niches and preparing, planning, it was very intense. Also, some areas that I enjoy a little bit more was the artistic side, which was the sculpting of, of all the lotuses that we had around. Now you will see in this picture, I'm sculpting the lamps for the pillars. So after I sculpted the, together with one student, he made the, the lotus of the door and I they did the, the pillar lamps. And also there are no Buddhas there. So as you can see, we have one Malaysian Buddha in the, in the side, in the back. And we made a copy of it, made a mold, so now we can reproduce it. 
now Malaysians, Buddhas over there. So people sometimes come and Bante, I would like to have a little altar so where I can meditate. So we start to provide even, even uh, uh, the Buddha Rupas to the people who wish to practice. These are the lamps and now they, they go, they shine like this with the, with, the, with, the, with the lamp in the back. And every pillar, which there are many around, has one. So we made them from the scratch. Also a friend helped us to design this um, glass, uh, well, a glass uh, window, color glass window which is a, is a symbol of samsara from life and death. So when children come, I talk to them very poetically about the, the stages of life and how we can purify our mind and grow our inner lotus and then it develops more until it's fully outside, shining towards the light and fully enlightened and also the leaves have uh, some drops of dew that uh, talking to detachment, etc. As I mentioned, we want the, the architecture to be teaching the Dhamma as well. So this is the view from the uh, back garden, the inner garden. So we enter into the middle, middle, uh, how to say, the middle level. We came in and then you can go one level up or one go down. And down there are two rooms. And here beside the, the, the room that you saw, there is the meditation hall and on top the classroom and dining hall. So let's take a look. The meditation hall, we are very fortunate that Wow, it was a big adventure, but we found this Buddha from Burma that uh, was already in Mexico in an antique shop. But uh, it was very fortunate, and fortunately there were still funds from the original ones to, 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 to acquire it. And uh, this is the Buddha, and the other one standing was donated. So you can see the size people, even my mother, when she arrived, when I said, Mama, come to see the Buddha, when she arrived, she, she would not <laughs> expect, and when she saw, well, I was surprised she started crying and that has happened to a few people that comes. It is so a little bit sh uh, surprising when you see the size, but also the, the place, I would say the forest and everything. So Jasmine itself has been giving a very, very nice uh, impact on the, on, on, the, on the locals. As you can see, there is, I live in an area where there are still some minorities, so some tribe people and they still wear their traditional dress, and some people who follow their traditions. As you can see, my mother is there, you can see sitting with white hair, and the people, and they believe that the Buddha has some kind of miraculous powers, but I say, okay, actually, the miracle of the Buddha is his teaching, what we can apply inside. So always the conversation starts, and now many people from many sorts of life uh, ha has been uh, and, uh, learning more about the Buddha's teaching, and then this is how it is now, no floor yet, but uh, the walls are painted and uh, still some car, I want to make a bench there because people in Mexico is not used to sit on the floor, especially elderly, so we'll make a bench over there so people can meditate. This is a picture on top, not the best one because this, this was uh, before, but anyway, you can see the process, that room is where we're gonna, there is a screen that comes uh, uh, from the roof and will be projected for the weekly class. I will show you the projects now. The kitchen, now is much better than that. Uh, then this is the view, the, the, the institute, Dhamma Institute, the lotus pond facing the forest. So you can walk around inside, like a non, without end, we, we made a walking path, but then you can also go to the forest and get lost in 100 hectares of forest uh, of oak trees. So, made a pagoda also, you can see here the dimensions around. And this is an aerial view from the monastery. It was a hill, so the, we came from the other side in the tunnel, and then we came with a machine and, and uh, the, it was dig. And I, we took 90 trucks of, uh, of soil and it was placed somewhere else in the community and then we uh, incrustated the, the building there. So we try to, to be as, like the curves are like the mountain was before, so it feels quite uh, organic. This is a rooftop and we also prepare so you can do lying down meditation, but it, is, it has an angle so you can see the mountain and you see the sky and everywhere can be used. Anyway, so that's the foundation that we make. But, uh, and it's not yet open, I will return uh, in, a, in a few months and I will start uh, finishing first and then start the activities. But the Dhamma was already running for six years. These are the classes that I was giving every week for five years there and, and uh, three years here. And now it started only with Mexican people, but because there is so little Dhamma in Spanish, many people from Uruguay, Argentina, Colombia, 
Ecuador, Sp Spain, even Cuba, which they have quite some restrictions with the internet, they are joining to the sessions. And it started with my mother because she, she was curious. I said, why do you like, why you became a monk? She kind of asked when I returned with the rope. And I said, well, if you want to know, I can tell you, but it won't take one day, eh? it will take a few, so you can. Uh, so she has been coming, not missing any. So I started with my mother, and my plan was not to go and teach, but if she asked me, what, how, what else? Imagine the gift she's giving me, the opportunity. And then some psychology uh, friends came, and then they, can I bring my brother, my sister, my uncle, and boom, 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 it grew. So now you will see how much. After that, some doctors came and they said, can you come to the hospital to talk to, to the medical staff uh, and the nurses because they're having a lot of stress and also sometimes they don't show much compassion to the patients. They treat them sometimes like clients only. So, so also, as you know, the Dhamma has many things to share for that. And then I was invited to the university of the Catholic priest. I was shocked at the beginning, but they have invited me already for three years and they're very happy. We are good friends. And I feel supported by them and they will come, they want to come to the monastery. They ask a lot of questions according to the Vinaya because it's much more detailed. The Buddha left to Buddhist monks way, way more tools than uh, for our own training than what uh, was left for the Catholic priest. Anyway, uh, it continued growing because then some people, some teachers that were working in uh, centers uh, fighting addiction or centers where they bring the drug addicts to recover. So as you can see, this group is the parents, 2,000 parents of drug addicts. So at the beginning, I started working only with the drug addicts and alcohol addicted pe persons. And uh, then later on, we discovered, we knew that the parents also have a lot of things to solve because don't understand the nature of addiction, attachment, and the Buddhist, Buddha's teaching has plenty to talk and, and share about it. And there was also a lot of guilt in the parents because they were feeling like, what did I did wrong that my kid became a drug addict? So as you can see, this is just a few pictures of, of it. There are a few groups like this, but they're very respectful. I'm very glad they are very uh, enthusiastic, respectful, and they follow. Although they are Catholic, I have found a way not to get into controversial points like God or something like that. And I just speak about the nature of the mind. I say, everybody gets angry, isn't it? Yes, so that's nature, so we go with it. Whatever we believe, it's just a belief. We choose what to believe as we choose what to dress and what to eat. But the facts of life uh, are facts, so we can focus on it and just improve our mental qualities. So until now, I haven't had any, any backlash. I've been given Dhamma talks inside a church in one of the centers. I went and I was shocked because at one time I'm talking about the Dhamma, I see the people and I know the churches. And then I turn and then there is the Christ in the back and I was like, wow, this is something. I felt very happy because of the way uh, the, the whole flow has been going. So these centers, many of them are, are run by Catholic organizations and civil, but it is many of them. We have a big, big problem with drug addiction. This is one of the hundreds of centers in every state. There are not just one, many, and for female, male, and then you will see many of, most of the people there don't want to be there. They are brought by force when they are drunk or drunk. And then there, as you can imagine, there is a lot of anger. So we work a lot with forgiveness, meta, also speaking mostly about attachment and addiction and how to combat it. So in this picture, you can see very sadly, unfortunately, there are children, 10-year-old, 12-year-old already in the center. So that means that for them to be in the center, they must have been one or two years at least as a drug addict on the streets. So you can imagine the size of the problem we have because unfortunately, the drug dealers are giving the drugs outside the primary schools as candies to the kids. So really, uh, moha and loba, all the mental defilements, ignorance and craving has no boundaries. So it's very sad and unfortunately, as you know, there is violence. There's a lot of, every day there are killings between the drug cartels and sometimes innocent people dies. The level of sila is very low, so there is a robbery every day in the streets, you don't, people is not safe anymore to go in the night. They can stop you in the, in the, in the corner when you stop with your car, just with a gun and go down, give me your, your phone and everything. 
So it's a very sad situation, actually. So a lot of work to do to inform the people of the benefits of SILA, mental stability, and how to cultivate our good qualities. Also, there is many, of course, m millions of good people, but unfortunately, there is a plenty of bad people to, to, that, to not allow us to be really peaceful. I was also invited with another monk, Vante Nandisena from Argentina, to many universities. This is a philosophy university and then also to political sciences. They are very interested how did the Buddha deal with the problems, and there's plenty of stories, as you know, in the suttas, how the Buddha dealt with uh, conflict inside the Sangha, outside the Sangha, with the king and many other things in between their kingdoms. So plenty of stories and information that they do take, and also speaking about the importance of having uh, moral leaders so these people are starting to become a politician, so I think it's the best way, the best place to start talking about morality. And many of them were really sincerely because they are young and they were seeing the logic in it. So I really hope uh, these things come greater and maybe one of them one time is in, in a position of power and something changed. Anyway, the bottom one is Psychology University. This is another university that is having a uh, program, scientific program on how to tackle drug addiction scientifically, neurologically, etc. And yet, although it's scientific, they feel they find so relevant what the Buddha has to say that it doesn't crash with science at all. So I've been invited to be kind of a part of the head committee to advise on the moral side of it. What did the Buddha said? All the tools, mindfulness. So as you can see, the work just grew and grew and grew. Sometimes I have to admit, uh, I have to confess that I have felt overwhelmed, but I'm trying to be as efficient as possible. Another area of work which I consider is very important is to talk with the kids. As you can see, one of the many groups that come, uh, this, one, this was near the monastery, the, the institute, uh, talk to them about the danger of, of, of starting with drugs. So this is the best place. I show them images, how people look before taking drugs and after, and they really get shocked. And as you see, that's what happened with alcoholism. So this is part of the work. So when people ask me, which was part of the curiosity, Vante, what is happening in Mexico? I say, well, a few things are happening there. We haven't opened the center yet. We will need to find the way to continue it running. The structure is there, but I don't know where I'm going to find the food, how we are going to manage to, to run it. So the community there, uh, it's many people don't have the economic means. It's a less le lower uh, income, as, as we can see, for example, in many countries here in Asia. And also the culture of generosity is not instilled yet. People don't yet understand the value as a practice for generosity. So I have to be honest, being there, it was quite challenging. For food, there is no problem because uh, how much can a monk eat? and people is generous, but then for, for donating, for the, uh, running the monastery, that still needs to be found out, but I hope I can inform the people, make a community, many people is coming, and we will try to flow. Anyway, so this is what happened in Mexico. Uh, if any of you wish to support, it will be very welcome. Now you know what is happening. My job will be to make the best of those seeds that you plant of generosity. And uh, mainly I wish to share this so we can rejoice and develop confidence in the Dhamma. Because you can see now new land, here in Asia you've had it for a long time and you are used culturally, you know about monks and many of the things of the teaching. But there in a new land that is taking root and people is being benefited and growing as you see, we can get confident that the Dhamma really works. And it's an invitation not to take it for granted because we might, because culturally, okay, Buddhism, and my family is Buddhist, but go closer, check the tools, and they are very relevant to the contemporary world for our work, our family, whatever we do, and especially when we are having difficult situations. May we be free from all this drug addiction, any kind of obsession of the mind, attachment, and eliminate all the source of suffering with all the uh, negativity that can arise, fear, anxiety, that the uh, rhythm of life has a lot. But be sure that there are many, many more tools than the ones we know in store in the Buddha's teaching waiting for us to be used and also share with our family. May all of us be well. I will continue trying my best with the job over there. And best wishes for all. I am very grateful to Malaysia for hosting me for one year and a half until now. Very glad, very good conditions in SBS for the teachers 
the work that Bhante Agachita has done, all the associations here in Kuala Lumpur and there, it's really very valuable. I have never seen such organization. So I will also encourage you to come support because there is many things to do and is supporting monks and families in the other side of the world. Whoever supported me here, I continue supporting weekly the people there. So know that be before going to bed and waking up in the morning, rejoice in your goodness because your good actions here, what they have supported, just me, eh? but we are many monks, foreign monks. Whatever you have supported me is helping families in the other side of the world. So rejoice in it and have sweet dreams with the satisfaction in the mind that your goodness is keeping the sasana, is keeping us, keeping the teaching alive for our own benefit, and may it last for many more generations. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu for all the goodness that you have been doing. Let's continue, and we will continue doing our part. Have a good day. Best wishes. Thank you for everything. <laughs>